Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to trust God that you're doing very well. I bless the Lord for the opportunity to come back again. We've not been live for some time. I want to take this opportunity to thank you. Each one of you that prayed with us after losing our nephew. I want to appreciate all of you that were able to come in handy, even supporting us financially. Thank you for you that were able to even show up in the barrio. May the Lord richly bless you. Indeed, we are in a journey of faith. And in this journey of faith, many things are bound to happen. But even as they happen, our focus still remains. We are looking forward to that blessed hope even the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. And after those things happen in our lives, then we have an assignment. We have to keep on going back to doing that which God has called us, serving him and our generation before our time of seeing the maker comes. Karibu sana to the minister's lounge. I want to believe that you have kept on serving God. Against all the challenges that we are going through economically, the challenges of matters to do with faith and doctrine, I want to believe that you've been able to stay on course and you have continued serving God because on that day it will be required of us to give an account. Karibuni sana kwa minister's lounge and uh, the message that is in my heart uh, in consideration with the many things that have been happening in our country about matters to do with cards, matters to do with sound doctrine, I want to deal with a topic that I am calling unveiling the shadows of immaturity. We live at a time whereby each one of us feel and think we are mature in the things of God until one is tested, until one is tried, until there is a storm, until there is an attack. Until there is afflictions that comes along our way, you will never know how mature you are. And that's why the Bible says in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter number 10 and verse number 13, that we need to check and look if we are strong and we are standing on the right ground. Why? Because at times we are shaken and you discover otherwise. So tonight... This morning, from wherever you are watching me, allow me to share this topic that I'm calling Unveiling the Shadows of Immaturity. First Timothy chapter number 3 and verse number 1, the Bible says, This know also that in the last day, perilous time shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemous, disobedience to parent, unthankful and holy without natural affection truth breakers false accusers incontinent fears despisers of those that are good traitors heady high-minded lovers of pleasures more than lovers of god having a form of godliness i want you to mark that verse number five having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof from such turn away, for of this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captives. Can you imagine silly women laden with sins? I don't know why the Bible talk about silly women. And you would understand in many of the institutions where there is a lot of deception, you have bigger numbers of women. And I'm calling my fellow mothers, my fellow ladies, Oh, I pray that this will transform you, that you will not be within the category of what the Bible calls the silly women, uh, the silly women laden with sins, led away by diverse lust, ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. They are ever in the church, ever attending Bible studies, ever in revivals, ever in crusades, spiritual, spiritual, spiritual all the time but they do not learn, they do not gain to the knowledge of truth. In unveiling the shadows of immaturity, every parent gets concerned when their child does not grow. All the more, when the child does not grow and behave like they are mature, there is nothing bad like dealing with a person who believes they are mature, but as you look at them, they are actually babies physically or they are baby, babies spiritually. 
in a kikuyu we have a saying that we say yani you know there's something that is still missing there's something that is actually not adding up no in matters to do with spiritual growth is the birthmark of our faith the birthmark of our faith is our spiritual growth now our church in this country has found itself in a dilemma we've been thrown into a confusion you know and there are many of us that have been left wondering now which is the right way who is the right pastor what is the sound doctrine which way to go and no wonder i'm calling my topic unveiling the shadows of immaturity i am calling them the shadows of immaturity because those people purport to be mature but in the real sense is a shadow in the real sense is a mark of immaturity in the real sense they deny the power thereof the power of godliness the power that would call them to a place where they operate within the realms of scripture it's one thing to believe in the word of god is a different ball game to be a doer and the marks of maturity are well evidence on who are you when it comes to applying the word of god in your own practical situations and allowing God to instruct you or us for the purposes of an external behavior that subscribes to the power of the cross, the power that is able to conquer the carnal man in us, the power that is able to conquer the Amalekite in us, the enemy of our salvation, the flesh and the world. Now, many of us think that we need power for miracles, but the greatest miracle you will ever experience in your life is conquering yourself. I'm talking to you. I'm talking to men and women that go to church, struggling with anger, struggling with immorality, struggling with fornication. The greatest power that you will ever experience in your life is the yielding of yourself to allowing the divine power of transformation to conquer and subdue your carnal man and leave you at a place where you are obedient to scriptures. I want us to understand that God desires that we may grow in the grace and in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. That is in 2 Peter chapter number 3 and verse number 18. He desires that we grow in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. 2 Peter chapter number 3 and verse number 18. God has called us to live a life that is worthy of our calling and growing in the knowledge of God. God has called us to live a life that is worthy of our calling and our life that we will continually grow in the knowledge of our God. That is Colossians chapter number 1 and verse number 10. And this kind of a growth is a growth that brings us to a place whereby we are able to bear the fruit of righteousness and we are able to grow in every good work that is expected of us. Now, God has not left us without anyone to take care of us. Remember, the Bible says that we are the sheep of his pasture and he is committed to feed us and he has commanded or he has provided unto us men or means of growth in jeremiah 3 and verse 15 the bible is very clear that he has given us pastors according to his own heart i want you to know not everybody calling themselves pastors have been called in accordance to the heart of god or they began with god and along the journey of life they took a different angle but god has provided unto us pastors according to his own heart pastors that will feed us with knowledge and will feed us with understanding are you saying the word of god is hard to understand look for a pastor who is after god's own heart let them open the scriptures to you because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of god god has given these men and women of god uh, the pastor teacher to be able to equip his own people for the works of service he has given us these people to be able to grow us in the knowledge of our lord jesus christ and that we may come to the full stature of our lord jesus christ 
Ephesians chapter number 4 from verse number 17 to 18 is very clear on what I am talking about. Verse 14 of the same, uh, God has given us, this man of God, to be able to mature us so that we are no longer infants being tossed here and there by the waves and blown here and there by every wind of teaching and by the cunning and the craftiness of people in their deceitful scheming. I want us to understand not everybody who preaches the Bible is preaching the true authentic word of God. Many of us have come up with cunning, craftiness, and deceitful scheming of the word of God because of what we read from the beginning in the perilous time where we will have teachers, will have lovers of themselves, will have covetous people, will have boasters, blasphemers, people who are disobedient to the word of God, people who are not committed to the continuous spiritual growth that brings in a transformation of behavior. Now, in the unveiling of the shadows of immaturity, I want you to understand five things. And one of them is behind the shadows of every spiritual immaturity, there is a wrong doctrine somewhere. There is a wrong doctrine somewhere. The menu, the teachings are wrong. And the Bible says in Matthew chapter number 7 and verse 15 to 16, that watch out for the false prophets. Who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ferocious wolves, and you will know them by their fruits. Not every man of God preaching to you is actually doing it from the heart of God. Behind every shadow of immaturity is a ferocious teacher of God's word, is a wrong doctrine. 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 13, the Bible warns us of demonically inspired teachers who even forbid marriages and certain foods. False teaching has been a threat in every age, including the present age that we are in. People forbidding us to marry. And as they forbid marriage, they are actually focusing on the marriage of our Lord Jesus Christ and the coming kingdom where God will establish or God will establish his son and his throne with the bride. Behind every shadow of immaturity, behind every deception that you see, there is some false teaching somewhere. And you know what? Garbage in, garbage out. You are a product of what you eat spiritually. You are a product of what you feed on. You are a product of what you listen to. Behind every shadow, of immaturity number two, there is a believer with an itchy ear looking to hear what they want to hear. We live at a time whereby people are looking for preachers that will confirm the things that they want. The Bible is very clear in 2 Timothy chapter number four and verse number three, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine but having itching ears, they shall heap to themselves teachers in accordance with their own lusts. You can imagine we are in those days. You can imagine we are in those days where people are looking for people who can confirm what they want to hear. I like the amplified version. It says, for the time is coming when people will not tolerate, they will not endure sound doctrine and wholesome instruction but having ears itching for something that is pleasing and gratifying they will gather to themselves one teacher after another to a considerable number chosen to satisfy their own liking and to foster the errors they hold people who will look for a confirmation of the evil and the wicked life they are living looking for somebody to stamp and say you are on the right direction when you are on the wrong direction what are you looking for in a church what are you looking for as you follow and pursue a man or a woman of god are you looking for the true authentic word of god 
Are you looking for a word that will transform you? Are you looking for a word that will rebuke you, that will correct you, that will demand an inner transformation of your worldview and how you look at the word of God? Are you looking for a preacher who will challenge the worldly wisdom that you have harbored for a long time? I am here to let you know uh, that the shadows of immaturity are hidden in a people that are looking for preachers that will preach to them what they would want to hear. People who are looking for signs and wonders. The Bible is very clear that an adulterous generation will pursue and seek for signs. But they that walk by faith will believe God even when there is no sign. What are you after? Are you after authentic spiritual maturity? Or are you uh, dying in a spiritual immaturity yet purporting and presenting ourselves as them that are of maturity? Let us know this, that the standard is Jesus Christ. You may be asking, what is the standard, Pastor? Monica, the standard is Jesus Christ. And he has called us that we may grow in faith from grace to grace, from faith to faith, until we attain the full stature of our Lord Jesus Christ. Until we come to that place of maturity where we cannot be turned by every wind of doctrine. A place of stability. A place where you are able to distinguish what is good and what is evil. A place whereby you are able to separate the spiritual matters and the carnal matters. A place where you have yielded yourself to the word of God that is quick and sharper than a double-edged sword. Hebrews chapter 4 and verse number 12. To separate the carnal things. To separate the spiritual thing. And in humility you choose to apply the word of God to yourself. Desiring that it will bring in a transformation, that it will open your eyes and your heart to learning and an opening that allows you to gain spiritual wisdom that can only come from the word of God. Behind the shadows of immaturity is a stiff-necked generation unwilling to transform. God desires to work in us, both to do and to will for his own good pleasure. Philippians chapter number 2 and verse number 13. And remember, in Ephesians chapter number 2 and verse number 9 and 10, after receiving Jesus Christ, we become his workmanship. And he desires to work in us. He desires to transform us. And why does he want to work in us? Because the initial salvation transforms our spiritual man, but the soul man is loaded. When the children of Israel were delivered from the land of Egypt, they were full of Egypt. They were full of carnality. They were full of excess baggage from Egypt. No wonder a journey that was supposed to take them 11 days to complete their journey of calling to the land of promise, they took it for 40 years. They were a stiff, naked generation. And the Bible is very clear that God took them through the wilderness that he can be able to test their hearts, to be able to see what is in their heart. And God does not lead us to the promise directly. There is the calling of God and then there is the problem of the wilderness. Then there is the reward of the promise. And this is a period of child training where God tests our hearts. Most of us, because of the way we respond, we stay longer in some lessons and some stay shorter in the same lessons. Why? It's all an issue of willingness, of allowing God, allowing our Lord Jesus Christ to co-work in us, both to do and to will for his own good pleasure. And the pleasure of our Lord Jesus Christ is that he may give us the kingdom. Maturity is not an issue to do with age is an issue to do with the willingness of allowing God to work in us. These are people who struggle with laying aside all manner of filthiness. James chapter number 1, verse 21 up to 24. Without which we are not able to receive the word of God with meekness. Thereby meaning we are puffed up, we are left proud, and without the brokenness that is required for the transformation of our soul man, we end up being resisted by God 
because the Bible says he gives grace to the humble but resists the proud. These are people, a stiff naked generation, a people who live like the Gentiles with minds that are full of darkness. They do not allow the light of the word of God to shine in our hearts. Oh, we do not allow, let me put myself there, to shine in our hearts. We have closed our minds. We have hardened our hearts against God. We don't hear clearly what he wants. I pray that by the end of this, you will desire authentic spiritual maturity. And I'm inviting you to my YouTube channel, Pastor Monica Mlinge. I request you to go there, subscribe to that YouTube channel. There is so much I've spoken about spiritual maturity that is worth of edifying you. If you have not hit the notification bell, I welcome you to hit that notification bell so that anytime I upload a video, you will be notified. These stiff decade people are the people who have a spirit of contempt to God's word. They can't be moved by any revelation. They are like, wow, that is deep, but they will do nothing with the word of God. I pray that God will help me, that I will not be a stiff naked generation. There are people who are stuck on the acquired instruction of a time. They have conformed to the worldly ways. They have a sluggish spirit. They have become dull of hearing because of lack of the quickness or the meekness to be able to receive the word of God. And when we are not able to receive the word of God as intended, the spirit of God keeps quiet until we cooperate with him with an evidence of doing and practicing the word of God. Behind every shadow of immaturity is a genuine seeker seeking in the wrong place. I feel for these people. You see a people who have given their life to the Lord. They are hungry for the word of God. They are seeking, but they fall in the hands of deception. They have fell in the hands of evil and wicked people. They find themselves in the wrong places. I want to encourage you. Keep on seeking and seek in the right way. Though you fall in the wrong hands, God will still connect you with the right people. God has a way of connecting the genuine seekers with the real. That is deep, but they will do nothing with the word of God. I pray that God will help me that I will not be a stiff naked generation. There are people who are stuck on the acquired instruction of a time. They have conformed to the world, to the worldly ways. They have a sluggish spirit. They have become dull of hearing because of lack of the quickness or the meekness to be able to receive the word of God. And when we are not able to receive the word of God as intended, the Spirit of God keeps quiet until we cooperate with Him with an evidence of doing and practicing the Word of God. Behind every shadow of immaturity is a genuine seeker seeking in the wrong place. I feel for these people. You see a people who have given their life to the Lord. They are hungry for the Word of God. They are seeking. But Number five, as I bring this to a close, behind Every shadow of immaturity is a hurting people that have never healed. It's people who have gone through affliction in the hands of God, but they didn't understand that suffering was part of the package. It's a people who have been offended, and instead of forgiving, their hearts have been hardened. And anytime the word of God is sowed into their lives, they are not able to bear the fruit therefore it's a people that are totally swayed by the worldly things of this life the cares of this life and the word of god cannot find a lodging the previous hearts the previous offenses have toughened such individuals causing them to raise a high defense of mechanism on any shadow of resembling of any mountain that causes their own heart. Now, this kind of people, they avoid uh, the same experiences they have gone through without knowing that God desired that through the same experiences, he would bring them to the place of maturity. 
unveiling the shadows of immaturity. Where are you stuck? Seek for the right word of God. Seek for godly men who have evidenced a behavior that shows that indeed they love the Lord. They are not covetous. They are not lovers of money. They are not selfish. And their doctrine is consistent to what is taught in the word of God. May the Lord richly bless you. May the Lord help you to design good and evil. May God quicken the spirit man in your heart that you'll be able to know the sound doctrine and the doctrine that is not sound so that on that day, as we stand before the Lord at the judgment seat, he will look at us and say, Welcome, thou good and faithful servant. Help us to draw waters from the book of Genesis to the book of Revelation. Your word is water, our God. Your word is food. May we be able to mature to the point of connecting with the food that you have provided unto us, even in the scriptures. We thank you. We bless you. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button on my YouTube channel. Share this with a friend. Tag a friend in all this. And let's be your great help to one another. God bless you.